at a price of sixteen dollars. All right. What happens is because we know these coefficients, there are these equations, and they're in your textbook. In this textbook, they're on page ninety-one. You know these equations that you can use to determine these elasticities at a given point. This is the point on our demand curve. So what is the price elasticity of demand for our product when we're charging $16? The price elasticity of demand, sometimes called the own price elasticity, price elasticity for our good. It is the coefficient for x times the price of x over the quantity of x. That's a red x up there in the, in the corner. I don't know how well this is going to come through on any kind of video, but you will notice in all of these equations we use the same numerator in this calculation. Let's put the numbers in here. What do we get? What is alpha x? Look at the board and tell me what is alpha x. Negative 20. Negative 20. Be sure to include the sign. So the negative 20 the price of X is 16, and at that price we're selling, I'm going to round it off, 215 units, okay? Well, that's a negative 320 over 215, which is what? That's French for what? <laughs> what do you get? 1.48. It is a negative. I said I rounded it up. I said negative 1.49. Important to note, by the way, it does have a negative sign. Every one of these own price elasticities is always a negative number. Because when price goes up, quantity goes down, and vice versa. So they'll always have a negative number. But we tend to ignore the negative for a minute. Okay, ignoring the negative, we're taking the absolute value of this number. If the coefficient is 1.49, is the demand elastic or inelastic? Elastic. It's elastic because it's greater than 1. We ignore the negative, but it's greater than 1. So we conclude that we have an elastic demand for our product. And again, borrowing back from micro, we know that if we raise our price, our total revenue or our sales revenue will decrease. We'll make less money. Now that's not good news or bad news yet. What's going to happen when we raise our price? We're not going to sell as many products, right? Well, maybe by selling fewer products, we'll bring our costs down more than our revenue falls, and we'll actually make more money. We don't know. We'd have to have more information to be able to tell that. How are we doing? Tracking with me so far? Okay. Now, let's put this one up here, 1.49. I'll throw the negative in front of it. Um, a typical question might be, um, what would happen if we raised our price from $16 to $18? Well, how, how could we answer that? We could plug $18 in here, right? And then we could figure out how many units we're selling. Why don't we do that real quick? If the price of X goes to $18, what will happen to our sales? Well, so we start back over at the top because we've got to get the number of units. Huh? No, we're not talking. Yeah, we're going to get the number of units here. Yeah. Just plug 18 right here. What's 530 minus 360? <coughs> 175. We'll sell 175 units. And again, I'm rounding off a little bit. Okay, so far? You with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, then if you're with me, if you're not, you got to say so. Go back up here for a minute. At our first price, 16, what's our total revenue here? How do you find the total revenue we're making? How much sales revenue are we making? We're making 16 bucks each and we're selling 215 units. So multiply them together, price times quantity. Mm -hmm. What's our total revenue up here? 3,440. 
$3,440. Okay? And what's our total revenue when we raise our price? $3,150. $3,150. So our total revenue fell when our price went up, just as we expected. How are we doing? Mm -hmm. okay. Let's see if I get any other examples of what I was going to use. So the word own indicates that's your own product? That is the your own price, meaning the price and the quantity of good X. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, but how did you find the 175 units when you changed the price? I put 18 into this equation, the demand equation. Oh, okay. And when I solved for Q to 18x, I got 175. You put 18. Put 18 here. Okay. I have 35 minus 360. Okay. Okay, good. Please slow me down and feel free to interrupt to make sure this is getting across. Let's try the other one, though. Let's try the next one here. Let's do sigma xy. This is the cross price elasticity of sales of x with respect to the price of y. In other words, when the price of y changes, what happens? Um, yeah. Price times quantity. Price times quantity. Okay. Good. All right. Let's solve for the cross price elasticity for x and y. Same idea, we're going to take alpha y, the coefficient for y, times the price of y over quantity of x. You just have to know that formula. Okay? And since your exams are open book, that should not be a problem. What is alpha y? 17. What kind of 17? Positive 17. Positive 17. So, 17 times what? Price of y, what is the price of y? 4. Four. And what is the quantity of X? Uh, when are we at the... No, the original price, 16. That was the... 215. 215. So this is going to be sigma Y. And let's put the plus there. It's important to know what that sign is. And what this is, 4 times 17 is 68. Divided by 215. What do you get? Point three one six three positive. Yeah, or what I call point three two. I tend to just round it to two digits. Okay, I've got a cross price elasticity of point thirty two. Positive point thirty two. Um, Is it always positive? No, no, it'll be positive when you have a positive coefficient. Because a positive cross elasticity tells you these are substitutes, not complements. Okay? If this number had been negative, this would be negative and they would be complements.